السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters in this beautiful beautiful city of Clarksdorp in the northwestern province of South Africa this beautiful first eve of the month of Ramadan in the year 1440 Hijri 2019 it is indeed a virtue and a fadl of Allah it is by far the grace of Allah to allow us to witness this month of Ramadan we don't realize the value of things that have real value Shaitan happens to dangle the carrot throughout the year regarding material items. So for us, things of value are things that are flashy. But when it comes to the month of Ramadan, Shaitan is tied. So it is only the shayateen within ourselves that happen to make us at times forget the reality. But because of the blessedness of this month, we immediately feel the spirituality. I spent an entire month of Ramadan in this beautiful city in the year 2005. The same masjid. I led taraweeh for the entire month and I delivered lectures entitled Reasons of Revelation from Verses of the Quran. This year I chose to visit you for one night. It happens to coincide with the first night of Ramadan. What an honor for me. Brothers from this community, since the year 2005, every year, no matter where I was, for as long as it was within South Africa, they made an effort which was not farad, it was not even a sunnah, but it was out of the love that we had for one another. They made an effort to visit for a night or two, no matter where I was. I decided it's about time for me to make that effort to visit you as a community. May Allah accept it. I have absolutely fallen in love with all the places I have visited because I've made family in every society and community from my beloved brethren who happen to be within these communities. I think it is because it was within the month of Ramadan. It is the month of love. It is the month of love. The love of Allah my brothers and sisters, you want to taste the sweetness of Ramadan. Take out the hate from your heart and replace it with love. It is the month of the love of Allah, the mercy of Allah, the month of introspection, which means to look within you, your own faults, your weaknesses, the sinful from amongst us, and we are all sinful, should be weeping in the month of Ramadan, trying to earn the pleasure of Allah. قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِّمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Should we tell you something that is better than what you are gathering, your money and all of that that you are gathering? Do you want to know something that is better than all of that? The virtue of Allah and His mercy, better than everything, subhanallah. That is what should make you happy. When Allah says there is a day of mercy, get excited. When Allah says there is a month of mercy, get excited. Prove to Allah that you are different. This is Ramadan. I'm going to work hard. How many of us are excited about our football teams? When they are playing with for 90 minutes, we want them to run the whole 90 minutes and we want them to score goals. And if they haven't, we give them extra time and we are hoping that they will score in that extra time. Allah has given you 30 days, maybe 29 days. Keep running during these days and score as many goals as you can. You will break your own record and keep breaking that record every year. This is the month of Ramadan. It is the month of love. It is the month of resolving your family disputes. Do you know that? Why did Allah keep a brother and a sister for you? In order that you help them, you reach out to them, you solve your problems with them. Subhanallah, it's not easy. But you have to. It's the month of solving problems. You forgive, Allah will forgive you. You let go, Allah will let go of you. You open your heart, 
Allah will open the doors of Jannah for you. May Allah grant that to us. My brothers and sisters, I am only here for tonight. And I've only led four units or rak'at of prayer. And rightly so. Now that I'm a little bit older, my recitation is much slower. For some of us who don't know the Arabic language, it becomes a little bit tough to stand behind an old man who's reading slow, subhanallah. So although they ask me to lead much more, I know my weakness. I cannot make haste with the word of Allah. Because I know its meaning. I need to read in the same way I want to read on the Day of Judgment. Because the hadith says, يُقَالُوا لِصَاحِبِ الْقُرْآنِ A man who, or a person who's memorized the Qur'an will be told on the Day of Judgment, اِقْرَأْ وَارْتَقِي وَرَتِّلْ كَمَا كُنْتَ تُرَتِّلُ فِي الدُّنْيَا Read, recite, and keep elevating, keep going up higher and higher. And you will only be able to read the way you used to read in this world. كَمَا كُنْتَ تُرَتِّلُ فِي الدُّنْيَا Read how you used to read on earth. So for me, that is the most important part of the hadith. How you used to read on earth. I need to take my time. I need to try my best to read as correctly as possible. And I love it if I were to make a mistake that someone from the back, no matter where they are, yell that correction because it's not my word. It's the word of Allah. It is an honor to be corrected when it comes to a mistake you are making with the word of Allah. Brothers and sisters, don't ever feel hurt when someone corrects you. It is indeed an honor. It will go down in your book of good records. And it will take you to Jannatul Firdaus. Work on the Qur'an this month. Set aside a time of the day to recite the Qur'an, to look into its meaning, soften your nature, work on your character and your conduct, become a better person, a better person. Then you know what Ramadan is all about. We were all created by Allah. For what? Is it in order to amass wealth? That wealth you are going to leave in the world. The winner is the one who spends as much as he can in the, he can in the right cause while he's alive. That is the winner. And the loser is the one who amasses and amasses and hasn't spent. Subhanallah. They don't spend and they only spend in that which is sinful. Ask yourself, where do I spend? Do I give? And the hadith says the best amount you could ever give is that amount you're giving when you are fearing poverty. What's going to happen? And then you trust Allah. You say, no, Allah told me to give, I will give. Allah says, you give, I will give. Anfiq yabna Adam yunfiq alayk. Spend, O son of Adam, and it shall be spent upon you. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. Give, and you shall be given. Don't give, and what will happen? You lose. Allahu Akbar. May Allah help us to give. The reason why I'm mentioning giving, this is the month also of compassion and of charity. It's the month of sadaqat, khayrat, goodness. Reach out to people. Nobody should be homeless amongst us. Nobody should go without food amongst us. And don't just give them leftovers. Give them a solid meal. Why not? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. The one who makes another open the fast with honor and dignity and a good food, good meal, will get the reward of the fast that that person has kept. Why not lay out the sufras? Why not lay out the platters of food and feed them? Allah will reward you. It doesn't cost much. It doesn't have to be plush. My brothers and sisters, together with that, look at how much we prayed this evening. Salatul Taraweeh. Beautiful. Beautiful. Remember, search for the most correct recitation. The Huffad who have read this evening, they tried their best. They need your support. I take you back to a time in the 70s and the 80s when there was no taraweeh of the Quran. People used to only read the short surahs and it was done up to recently. We used to import Huffad from Cape Town. Do you know that? We used to import Huffad. When I say import, because of the lack of Huffad. Today when we have the Huffad, we have no Qadr. We have no value of these Huffad. No value. What will happen? Allah says, if you don't have value of something we gave you, we will take it away. It's over. Did you hear that? Anything that you have, 
you have a masjid, you don't value it, Allah will take it away. How many masajid were built by people whose children never read salah in that masjid? But new communities of different ethnicities came and they are the ones who filled the masajid. Why? Because our hearts became dirty. It became a competition regarding materialism rather than a competition to be in the masjid. Today people are fighting to control the mosque, but they are not fighting to read salah in the mosque. What an irony. Subhanallah. What an irony. Subhanallah. And I'm talking of the whole world. The Muslims have the same problems. If I were to tell you the issues I have seen across the globe, you might think I'm talking about your society, but I'm not. I'm talking of the Muslim Ummah. Let us compete with each other when it comes to the first Saf. لَوْ يَعْلَمُ النَّاسُ مَا فِي النِّدَاءِ وَالصَّفِّ الْأَوَّلِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَجِدُوا إِلَّا أَنْ يَسْتَهِمُوا عَلَيْهِ لَاسْتَهَمُوا وَلَوْ يَعْلَمُونَ مَا فِي التَّهْجِيرِ لَاسْتَبَقُوا إِلَيْهِ وَلَوْ يَعْلَمُونَ مَا فِي الْعَتَمَةِ وَالصُّبْحِ لَأَتَوْهُمَا وَلَوْ حَبْوَا If you knew the value of Isha and Fajr, you would attend in the masjid even if you had to come on your knees, even if you had to come crawling. That's what the hadith says. We have vehicles, we have methods of attendance and coming, but no, we're not there. The hadith says if you knew the value of the first saf and the value of calling out the adhan, you would have to draw lots. You would have to draw lots in order to figure out who's going to be in the first saf. We don't want to fight. Let's put our names in a hat. Whoever's names come out, let's check who's going to be there. That's what the hadith says would happen. But with us, we're not really too keen. Never mind. We want to stand under the air con so that even if it's in the middle of the masjid, it's fine. As long as it's blowing on me, I'm done. You are fortunate. This masjid has the air cons in the first saf. MashaAllah. So my brothers and sisters, I encourage you, I encourage you strongly to increase your connection with the people of knowledge. Because if you don't, Allah will take them away. The hadith says it loud and clear. إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى لَا يَقْبِضُ الْعِلْمَ انْتِزَاعًا يَنْتَزِعُهُ مِنَ النَّاسِ وَلَكِنْ يَقْبِضُهُ بِمَوْتِ الْعُلَمَاءِ حَتَّى إِذَا لَمْ يَبْقَ عَالِمًا اِتَّخَذَ النَّاسُ رُؤَسَاءَ جُهَّالًا فَسُئِلُوا فَأَفْتَوْ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ فَضَلُّوا وَأَضَلُّوا Subhanallah. Allah will not snatch away the knowledge just like that. He will cause the death of the ulama one by one. Then people will consider ignorant people as the leaders of community. Who will be the leaders of community? Who will be the leaders of community? Those who have absolutely no knowledge, no connection to the deen. They have a terrible reputation in society and community. The hadith says close to qiyamah, they will be considered the leaders of society. Allah says you need to know it's a sign of the hour. The ulama will be taken away one by one. Then you will have ignorant people leading. They will be asked, they will issue instruction and they will misguide and they themselves are misguided. That's the hadith. So please value the scholars of Islam, no matter where you are from. Value the scholars, respect them, give them their due. For indeed, when we respect them, our children will respect them. And when that happens, we have hope for the future generations. If we set a trend of arguing and fighting and disputing as is happening in almost all communities of Muslims across the globe, you know what will happen? Our children will have that trend to follow. They will think an alim is a man you should spit on. Because they witness their father doing that. And they witness their parents speak ill about ulama. So when they are passing a friend of Allah, they won't even greet. Subhanallah. Your greeting would be actually an honor for you. Because you are greeting a person who is closer to Allah than you are. But when your heart is dirty, you don't recognize what is good for you? Just like I said moments ago when I started the talk, we look at materialism and we think it's good for us. Allah says, you know what's better for you? To connect with your maker because you don't have long to live. You don't have long to live. My brothers and sisters, tonight I ask you to do something. Go back to when you were 15 years old or 12 and Write down how much money you spent or what was spent on you from that age to this day. 
you will be shocked how many millions were spent on you. That was your sustenance. Allah rose for, wrote for you. But you don't know because today in your pocket you only have 200 rands. So what do you think? Allah hasn't given me. But how much did you eat? Every day who provided for you? No matter what it was and what condition you were in. Are you not here today? Go back to 12 years old. Wallahi, write down what has been spent on you in money. And you will realize you are a multi-millionaire. The money that's been spent on you and what you've spent on. Qasaman bi Rabbil Bayt. I swear by the Lord of the Kaaba. You will be shocked how much money has been spent on you. Try it out to this day. If you don't want to go so far, look at how much in the last year was spent on you alone. Your food, your clothing, your whatever else, your this, your that, your rentals, everything. You will be very surprised. How much gratitude are we offering Allah? This is the month of calmness. Let's calm down. Month of leaving bad habits. We all have bad habits. Some are worse and some are slightly lesser. Cut them out. Chop them off. Completely gone. Why? I want to please Allah. My bad habit should go. Whether it is gambling. Whether it is pornography. Whether it is adultery. Whether it is alcohol. Intoxicants. Drugs. Even if it is something that people consider lesser. Such as smoking. None of you will ever tell me that smoking is a good habit. No one. So if it is a bad habit, you're a mu'min. Cut it out. Can't you do that for Allah? Can't you do that for Allah? He gave you your health, your body, your eyes, your nose, your hands, your feet, your nails, your hair, your stomach, your organs. He gave you everything. The list goes on and on. If you are to count the gifts of Allah upon you, you will never ever manage to count all of them. Allah says, man is very, very ungrateful, oppressive. Ungrateful. Why? You can't even leave something for the same Allah who gave you your life. And guess what? Tomorrow you're going back to Allah. Tonight you're going back to Allah. Then what? I am very fortunate and so are you to be in the month of Ramadan. We are witnessing a month. The Prophet says, Woe be upon the one who witnesses Ramadan and still did not achieve forgiveness because forgiveness is on sale. It is going wholesale. How can you not achieve forgiveness and you witness the month of forgiveness? The most merciful. He says, I'll forgive you. And you come out of Ramadan, you didn't achieve forgiveness. We have 28, 29 more taraweeh to go. I myself impose 20 minutes are almost up. But I want to end by telling you one thing, my beloved brothers and sisters. Increase the love in your heart. Increase the love. The love of Allah, its true litmus test is how much you end up loving others. And how much you love the knowledge that Allah has kept and sent down to us. How much you love the people of knowledge, how much you love your imams, your ulama, your mu'addin, how you treat the mu'addin who calls for adhan. The hadith says he will be the most conspicuous on the day of Qiyamah. Do you know why? When he calls the adhan, everyone who comes to that masjid for salah, the full reward of all of their salah goes to the man. People don't even look at him sometimes. It goes to show we don't realize what Allah has given value to. So that last point I want to say, when you come out of Ramadan, if Allah allows you and I to witness the last day, make sure your life has changed. Make sure your life has changed. It is easy to go for Hajj and to fulfill physically what Hajj requires. But to know whether your hajj was truly wholly accepted is not so difficult. You just have to look at whether your life changed when you came back or you remain the same person. The same applies to Ramadan. If you are the same person who went in and came out, 
with your bad habits, with your ills, then you have definitely lost. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us success. May Allah bless every one of you. May Allah help you all in whatever problems you are going through, your difficulties, your situations. May Allah soften your hearts and may He soften the hearts of those whose hearts have hardened against you and I and against the deen of Allah. Soften your hearts, become the best of people. A true sign of piety is when a person is loved by people, when a person reaches out to people with that love. You are kind to everyone. You don't hurt a fly. Your janazah will go with 30, 40,000 people. But when you've harmed everyone, people will say, that man died good riddance. We are not going to his janazah. May that never happen to us. Wouldn't we like people after we pass away to at least pray for us? If that is the case, pray to Allah and treat people with respect. Your community is one community. Build it. Don't destroy it. We today, as an ummah, we desperately require the building of communities. The building of community requires selflessness, not selfishness. It's not about me, myself, and I. It's about us. And when we say us, there is a lot of sacrifice required. May Allah bless you all. As you can see, I can go on and on. But now it's 21 minutes 15 seconds. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك.